All right, hello and welcome to the Spring 2022 California Exam Review. We're just gonna jump right into it. So for part one, or for question one, part one, we are given this graph of F below and they want us to find the average rate of change with respect to X from X equals negative four to X equals eight. So we have this point here and this point here. Well, remember the average rate of change we can find by using that slope formula. So if we were to draw a line, a secant line, kind of like that on this curve, and we can find the average rate of change. So remember our slope formula is gonna be the change in y's over change in x's. So we're going to have f of eight minus f of negative four over eight minus negative four. Well, f of eight is gonna be 10. So we're going to get 10, and then f of negative 4 is negative 2. This bottom is going to come out to be 8 plus 4. So we're going to get 12 over 12, which means our slope here, our average rate of change between these two points, is going to be 1. On to the next part. So suppose that f is continuous, f of 5 equals 4, and then we have this limit here as x is approaching 5 is equal to 10. And we want to find this limit here. So first thing I want to mention, because f is continuous, we know that the limit as x is approaching any value, in this case we're using 5, we know the limit of that is going to be equal to f of 5, right? So because it's continuous, um, the, what the value of the limit is approaching is the defined point of that function. So that means that the limit of f of x as x approaches 5 is going to be equal to 4 here. So now let's take this here and we want to use our limit laws to break it up into parts so that we can find what just this value would be. So we know that for our limit laws we have this constant here which we can pull to the left of the limit and then we can separate with this addition here. So by adding those changes we're going to get 3 limit as x approaches 5 of f of x plus the limit as x approaches 5 of g of x and that's going to be equal to 10. And so to get this side by itself we can subtract this part here. So the limit as x approaches 5 of g of x, which is what we want to solve for, is going to be 10 minus 3 limit as x approaches 5 of f of x. Well remember we said that the limit evaluated at this point, because f is continuous, is going to be equal to f of 5. So this is going to be equal to 10 minus 3 times f of 5, which is 4. So we're going to get 10 minus 12, which is negative 2. So our final answer is going to be a. All right, on to the next part. So we have a function f of x, which we know has jumped as continuity at this input x equals a. And we want to decide, well, which of the following five options must be true for this function. Um, and we're also given that f is continuous on all other inputs. So remember, jump discontinuity is going to look something like this. So we have some curve on one side, a hole, or maybe it's defined at that point. Um, so something like this. So we have this, this jump action happening here. And either we could have it defined up here, or we could um, have a hole on both sides, or we could have it defined down here. There's this multiple options there. Um, we could even have that point undefined. So so I mentioned that here because we have these two options here, A or B. So either F of A must be undefined or must be defined. Well, those this, either, so those both can't be true, but in this case, either one could be true. We don't know enough about this function to know whether it is or isn't defined. And we want to decide well, what has to be true. So both of these options are not going to be our answer because we just don't know enough about the function and there's likely going to be a better answer for us to choose. Part C, we have the limit of x as it's approaching a from the left side um, and then from the right side as well, so that's saying that they both exist, but they're not equal. Well, by definition of jump discontinuity, that sounds pretty good, right? We have these two limits. Um, but because there's the jump, the limits are approaching different values from either side. So just to go over the last two, that one C is sounding pretty good, but let's go over D and E. So D is saying that the left-sided limit equals f of a, or the right-sided limit equals f of a. So 
is that point defined and which side is it defined on is what this is saying. However, like we discussed for parts A and B, we don't know if that point is actually defined or not. We, we know that there's jump discontinuity at the point, but we don't know if it's defined. So this could be true, but we just don't know enough about it. And then lastly, for E, well, if there's jump discontinuity, we know that the functions, the two sides don't meet up. So we can't have the left and right side of limits equal the same point if it is defined. Otherwise, it wouldn't be discontinuous. So that's not going to be our option. So C is going to be our answer for that one. On to the next part. We have if f of 1 is equal to 10 and the derivative of f, so f prime of x, is greater than or equal to 2 for all x between 1 and 4, how small can f of 4 possibly be? So, first thing we want to note is, well, the value of this derivative is going to be greater than or equal to 2 for all values within this inequality here. So that means that the smallest the slope can be, so the lower bound of this inequality here is 2. So the smallest rate of change or slope that this function can have is positive 2. So to find the smallest value that f of 4 can be, it's going to be... Um, or so if we're assuming from, from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, we have that same smallest slope is going to be 2 here. So if we think, well, f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1, we know the smallest the slope, we want to say it's going to be 2, right? Nothing, anything greater than that would end up having a larger f of 4 value. We know f of 1 is 10, so an f of 4 is what we're solving for. So we're going to get f of 4 minus 10 over 3 equals 2. Multiply that over, we're going to get f of 4 is equal to 6, and then adding that 10 over. So we're end up, going to end up getting 16 here. So 16 is the smallest value that f of 4 can be, because we're assuming that the smallest slope or that smallest rate of change value of this function is that lower bound, that positive 2 there. And finally, on to part 5 of question 1, uh, we want to consider this function f of x equals x cubed. And they want to know what the value of this limit evaluates to. Well, what does this look like here? We have the change in y's over change in x's for two x values, x and then 2. So this looks pretty similar to the limit definition of a derivative, right? So that means that this limit is going to be equal to f prime of x, specifically at x equals 2. And so we can find that value by first finding what f prime of x is. So if f of x is x cubed, f prime of x is going to be 3x squared. And then, well, if we just plug in 2 for our x, we're going to get 3 times 2 squared. It's going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. So our answer there is going to be 12.